herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Gene Cannabis TV. Here we are, episode 620. And you've got Dank, he's your host, and we've got D David Raymond. I get David's name right. The last show I called him David uh, Rogers, Rogers, and that's another great guy, but he's a musician, not, not, uh, hasn't been on the show. On, uh, but anyway, David, so David's been traveling, and uh, kids came back and had some tales to tell uh, on the road. Eh? I'll tell them as fast as I can. Oh, no okay. rush, no rush. A couple this weeks ago, went back to Wisconsin, and and I wore this shirt, okay? It just, it just says Wild West Growers on it and it, it, trying to get a reaction out of people in the, in the airports and stuff like that. And I only got two or three people that even saw it. I guess the logo was a little bit too small. Well, anyways, on the way back from, from Madison, Wisconsin, we're, staying, we're at the Menominee Reservation, which is about a 37,000 acre uh, fed, fed, federally funded reservation. When, and they had a growth thing going back there that the feds actually came down and make them tore it down last year. Okay, and so we have a lot of negative attitudes going on back there, which they really did their job, I guess, as far as I'm concerned. But, so I wore this shirt on the way back. Well, Shawano, which is the Menominee Reservation, is 170 miles north of Madison. So we had to leave at 10 o'clock at night, drive four and a half hours. Thank God one of the granddaughters had a, an iPhone that directed us how to get to the Madison Airport, right? It worked like clockwork, pretty, pretty good. Well, my only complaint is the lady that every time you make a right turn or something, she doesn't say thank you or anything like that. She just tells you where to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we get to Madison at 2.30 2 in the morning. The airport's closed up. So I go over and find myself a spot in the lobby in a nice comfortable chair, put my feet up on the fireplace hearth that they have there, and I'm falling asleep. And within 20 minutes, that's when they brought out the, the vacuum cleaners and the carpet cleaners and <laughs> started blasting in my ears. So I didn't get to sleep much, right? Five o'clock, I'm kind of like, my girlfriend comes over and says, we got to go upstairs now. I said, okay. So I go upstairs and there's a whole bunch of people in blue shirts. Now, about this color, mm -hmm. but it says, I noticed later, it said TSA on them. So this was a TSA run that they were going to do on it. So there's about, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 people that went through the thing. Well, what happened was I go through the thing and holding a penny up over my head like this, and I didn't have a belt on them. Every time... I moved my belt, my pants like were about ready to fall off, okay? So, well, as I'm going through the, 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 the body scanner, my, my bags are going through the, the bag scanner and they're going beep over there. Well, there's only 11 metal um, zippers on the bag, so I'm sure it's gonna go off. So anyways, they asked me if I can pull over there and they're gonna frisk me now. They're gonna run me through the whole show. So they, as, as they're frisking me, the guys, the kids tell me, I've got to do this and I got to do this. I got to use the backs of my hands. That's fine. I'm laughing my head off because I wore this shirt right here. Everybody see it? There we go. Oh, he turned it on me. Anyways, I wore this shirt just to see if I could get a reaction out of people. And I got pushed through the line and I became the guinea pig for the day. Well, when it was all done, they swabbed my laptop down and everything. And I didn't have no, nothing metal on me except for I had a penny in my hand that held it over my head, right? Not a good luck sign, I guess. So, so anyway, we're all down there. I'm holding my arms out like this, and the, the, the head guy there, he goes, Sir, you can lower your uh, arms down. Your pants are about ready to fall off. You can grab, grab a hold of your belt loops. <laughs> I says, Darn, I was hoping they were just going to fall off. <laughs> so anyway, after it's all done, 60 people went through that thing, and I never saw one other person get scanned. Huh, wow. It was just David Raymond right. as the guinea pig for so the what TSA new, new <coughs> recruit retraining <laughs> session is all it was. So what did what, what well, you do with the penny you had in your hand? Put it back in my pocket. Oh. I should have flipped it off to one of those kids or something. Yeah. No, I was just anyway. thinking, no, yeah, I was just thinking if they, well, anyway, I, yeah, I was thinking you could really mess with their mind. You could, you could, could have dropped it, drop it and then go through it again and it wouldn't go off or whatever, you know. But. Well, what's, what's funny about Wisconsin yeah. is you're going down mm -hmm. the road and you see a bunch of cornfields. And a few years ago, we went back there and my, the, the, my basic son-in-law said, Dave, you want to get high? And he goes, check that out. There's a bunch of plants right there. There are a bunch of tall marijuana plants in front of a cornfield, right? It's growing wild. It's all ditchweed. You don't mm -hmm. get high off of it. He mm -hmm. went 
But anyway, so that was the story, and I, I wanted to go back there. I have a couple of pictures, but they're not good enough pictures to prove that marijuana grows along the side of the road back there. So mm -hmm. anyway, done with that story. So wow. let's go on. Oh, last part of my story mm -hmm. is that I want to warn people about the thieves are out. The thieves are out. Mm -hmm. I replanted a couple of my plants, a couple of can of tonics, which are CBD plants in 25 gallon pots. And I woke up in the morning and one of them's missing. Well, my biggest enjoyment is that the kids are probably going to grow it up. Their, their parents won't allow them to grow, so they went to someone's house and going to grow this plant. It's not going to have any. It's a, basically it's a no high plant, right? No no THC in it. It's all CBD, and they're going to find out and they're going to sell this to their friends, and their friends are going to get mad and beat them up because they sold them crappy weed. Yeah, we so warning, yeah. I've seen this happen in the past several times. So be careful what you steal, guys, because mm -hmm. you're going to get it in the end. Yeah, oh, the wrong yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a friend that had a plant stolen, and uh, the uh, cops saw him running with it, so they nailed him, and he said, well, I'll show you where it came from, and uh, I'll make it, you know, so he took it back where it grew, it came from, and it was a legal grow, right. <laughs> so they nailed him for theft. <laughs> well, well, I have one that when Daniel Ernst years ago gave me a video, it's like 20-some minutes long, and I shorted it down to eight minutes, and basically two guys peering over the fence, in front of his greenhouse. He's on the phone with the police department. This is probably 99, 2000, one of the first legal marijuana grows. He says, you guys got to get here. They're getting ready to tear my shed apart, blah, blah, blah. So after it's all done, it's, and these two guys are looking over the fence, and so I took the, I, made, I put some little text sound bite things in there. One of them says, the guy's saying, what are you doing, dude? And he goes, well, I'm getting down on my hands and knees, practicing this as a p position in case I go to prison. <laughs> and they crawl around, and they get they get plants that are this tall and and buckets this big around they didn't get nothing but uh, as they're throwing the plants over the wall and getting ready to leave the fence you hear a woof woof stop <laughs> police <laughs> so we got them so anyways wow. i yeah. played that on community tv a long time ago and i'm ready to play it again <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah <clears throat> that's uh, and that reminds me uh David is a long time uh, with uh, Eugene Cannabis TV. In fact, before it was Eugene Cannabis TV, it was just Cannabis TV in those days. Uh, but when I took over, I changed it to Eugene Cannabis TV because there is a Cannabis TV. So uh, right. besides, we needed our own, I thought, our own little... I don't have any right. attitude problem towards that at all. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no that's great. No, uh, in fact, what, in what year did you, did you say that it was that uh, uh, Eugene, the Cannabis TV was formed? Probably 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. had a, I had an office in the growers market called the Community Media Center and, and Daniel Ernst and I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think Larry Doberstein videotaped the first two shows. Um, there was two or three different people we did. Gary Kutcher was on with, with his uh, group that was mostly involved in the, the tree, tree hugger thought process. And mm -hmm. so there was a bunch of us that got together at the growers market back in I was a volunteer di uh, guide at the uh, uh, volunteer guide, volunteer at the at uh, Eugene Freenet, mm -hmm. and so then when I, they were just down there on uh, Charlton Street, and we moved across over to Community TV on uh, or Community the Community Media Center at uh, the Growers Market on Willamette Street. I love that Growers Market. I always wanted to get an office there, but maybe I've called a left it, wing courthouse uh, for years. Yeah. <laughs> the, the round table. I yep. love that. What a yep. perfect place for a meeting. Yep. You can sit at a table and see everybody's eyeball. <laughs> Look right yep. at them. I love it. Yeah. yeah, that's a good place. They've, they've had a lot of things that have been come, uh, come out of that place. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I brought in a couple of stories here. I was going to talk about um, this one here. Five states are voting on recreational marijuana this November. Which, And as I read through it, this is even more interesting than when I first started out looking at it. This is from fool.com slash investing written by sean williams on august 14th right or not the marijuana industry may be reshaping right in front of our eyes over the past 20 years we've been we've seen incredible growth in the illegal marijuana business starting with the passage of a compassionate use law in california in 1996 for medical patients medical marijuana has become available in half of all the united states since 2012, four states, Washington, Colorado, Oregon, and Alaska, along with Washington, D.C., have passed laws allowing for the legal sale of recreational marijuana to adults age 21 and over. Based on data from data research, based on data from cannabis research from ArcView, 
Legal marijuana sales had an estimated 5.4 billion in 2015, and legal sales could grow at an average of 30% per year through 2020. Yet all of this could be just the tip of the iceberg. These states are vying to legalize recreational marijuana. The November elections could wind up having a dramatic influence on the, uh, uh, on, the see, on the marijuana industry. The, though there were plenty of state movements that fell short of the required votes or grassroots support to get a marijuana initiative on the ballot, residents in nine states will be voting on whether to give marijuana the thumbs up or thumbs down this fall. Specifically, five states for, are vying to legalize recreational marijuana, which would more than double the current legal state total in one year. Here are the votes that will matter most come November. Have you got anything in comment so far, David, on that? Yeah, well, you came by the Wild, Wild West Grow site the other day, and right. we went. Yep. I did a little tour mm -hmm. there and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and they have so many people working there, and so many different things happening. It's like, come on, people, we're we're looking for people to go to work. Okay, we need jobs, jobs, jobs. 2009, the the the, the state legislature legalized the growing of industrial hemp in the state of Oregon. It took them six years for the Department of Agriculture to have the first meeting on that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's bull crap. Mm -hmm. So all, all I can say, but they had this this thing up in Salem this weekend where people could bring their marijuana products and show stuff. And I really honestly think that it's the state bureaucracies don't have a clue about what's going on. So they had this thing put on. This is my off the wall, out of the, out of the park thought process, mm -hmm. but it was put on so people could learn more about what's going on out there because I don't think the people in Salem have a clue about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. And I know. so I'm 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 really glad that what happened in Salem happened, mm -hmm. but I just I think there's more to the story and we need to find that out. And I'm going to work. I'm kind of a, been investigating journalism kind of stuff for the last few years, and I'm going <coughs> to find out a, a reason why that thing happened. I didn't get to go to it. I was, the next legislature session is going to be, it's going to be wild, man. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff coming on the pike, both good and bad, but mostly yeah. bad. Yep. And mm -hmm. mostly the bad's coming from the people with the fat pockets, by the way. Yep. But anyway, back on that tangent, but uh, back to Wild West Growers, you were talking about employment, just down on me, and there was a lot of people working out there, and it was incredible to see <laughs> pot plants, just as far as you can see, almost fantastic, beautiful. Uh, but how many people do they employ, you know? I'd be curious. Well, I'm, uh, I'm kind uh, of in charge of their, their email addresses and stuff like that, setting up new accounts for people, and I have 45 people on there, and that's only... If there's a few that aren't that aren't that don't work there anymore, and there's a, but I'm gonna say, 45 would be a good number of mm -hmm. people that start up. That's pretty good for a year, years, oh, yeah. years, year and a half growth down the road. So yeah. oh, it's yeah. like, come on, people, this is a plant that hasn't been used for years. <laughs> okay, we've been listening to lies by Harry J. Anslinger, who was the first person the the pot czar back whenever, and all he did was come up with a bunch of lies of how they're gonna your Women are going to get raped and all kinds of malicious bull, bull crap. Finally, people are starting to wake up. Now, the one big the kicker thing here is Dr. Sanjay Gupta came out about three years ago with Weed 1, Weed 2, Weed 3. Weed 1 was about a little girl named Charlotte. The Department of, Ag not the Department of, Ag the Oregon, I'm sorry, run out of time. Oh, you bet. Yeah, we'll continue this when we get to the second half which is coming right up. So we'll be here and I hope you are too because uh, David and I have been here, been, done, been there, done there, and been done there, whatever. Anyway, we'll be back, so we'll see you in a second. Do you suffer from fear of losing your election? Are you terrified that voters will discover you've done nothing to improve their lives? Maybe it's time you talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex. In clinical trials, Incarcerex has been shown effective at reducing election-related anxieties by making voters think you're doing something about the drug problem. It's simplistic and fast-acting. If your problems continue or get worse, you can always double or triple your dose of Incarcerex. Whether it's addiction, therapeutic use, or just casual use, there's an Incarcerex plan for every American. Best of all, taxpayers, not you, will foot the bill. So talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex today. 
Common side effects include loss of civil liberty, police corruption, racial injustice, increased terrorism, spread of HIV and AIDS, and violent crime. Bloated prisons are also a common side effect. Stop taking incarcerates if bloating lasts longer than 20 years. If you're trying to balance the budget, keep families together, or protect human rights, incarcerates may not be right for you. Do not mix incarcerates with the Constitution or common sense. So start taking Incarcerex and keep pretending you're doing something about the drug problem. Welcome back to the second half of Gene Cannabis TV. We're working on episode 620. Imagine that. It seemed like it was just a few months ago we did episode 420 and now here we are at 620 so time flies and we're having fun i guess but uh anyway i'm sorry I, we got i wasn't watching the clock and ran a little bit short on the first segment there so we had to interrupt you Your where thought, was i uh oh i was, I was hoping you could tell <laughs> me <laughs> short-term memory <laughs> yeah i like to say short-term memory or short-term memory i don't remember having short-term memory problem. uh but yeah i was thinking as i was watching uh, those guys work at wild west scores i was thinking to myself I bet every one of them has probably been doing this for most of their lives already, you know. Now they're actually getting paid for it and above board and and, and uh, paying taxes. And and my my wow, guess is that cares. a lot of them would have a hard time getting employment someplace else. But you know what's oh, really yeah. weird? Everybody's called, I call them stoner growers, okay? And then there's whatever. And it's not just being disrespectful to them, but all of these people out here that work, that I've met that are growers, young kids and stuff like this, some of these kids are some of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. And I'm going, so if they're smoking pot, <laughs> I said, they, they got another thing going on here. That this, this whole story about being stupid because you smoke pot doesn't exist in my book anymore. It's like these kids are some of the sharpest people that I've met in a long time. Well, that's like Michael you know? Phelps, you know, the uh, yep. uh, Olympic swimmer, you know. Uh, I kind of been a little bit, I've been kind of turned off from him you know, after he turned his back on marijuana. He got caught with it. Instead of, you know, promoting the marijuana, he turned it in, turned around compliant completely, you know. Maybe he was but, a drug user. Uh, yeah. Shame. But, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, somebody, I can't remember, somebody wrote a letter. I think it was Russ Belleville. Belleville. Anyway, he, he said, this is a letter that Michael should have written about that situation. And it was right on, you know, right. in other words, saying, you know, yeah, show your kids. <clears throat> that uh, well, you don't, you know. Year, a few you years ago, I wanted to do it, make a T-shirt, and it was going to be. I worked with a, a couple of funeral homes here in Eugene, and, and so I came up with Harry J. Ansinger's gravesite location, the GPS coordinates and all that. It's back in Pennsylvania, someplace at some little church, and I was going to do a T-shirt that said, "Can I say I pissed off? I yeah. pissed on on wow. Harry J. Ansinger's grave." You see, well, you there's a guy the other day that. I went looking for it again. There's someone that's actually making money off of selling selling that information that I pissed on Harry J. Hansinger's oh, wow. grave. <laughs> I was going to say, do you have the coordinates of that? Yep. Wow, that's cool. Because uh, working for the funeral home, you get per kind of permissions to go check things out and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. I asked him if I could do this, and I came up with the coordinates of his exact. Wow. So I'd like to do a, a, a road trip back there so we could do mm -hmm. that, you know, and yeah. do a green screen, a little bunch of us doing what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah, I need to go up to Salem. Uh, judge Edwin Allen. You ever judge? With, you yeah. ever judge? You know who? Yep. You, know, you know who he is? Yep. Yeah, I know where I know where he's buried, and I'm guessing they didn't owe, owe him a little. Singer. I think I got a couple un, un qualified tickets that were signed off by him or something like that. Yeah, that, that he, a, yeah he was uh, he was noted for being absolutely brilliant and then turn around and being just an absolute idiot and ass. Uh, but anyway, I'll get into that. Stay so in anyway, grave. yeah, that's right. So anyway, let's jump on now. Uh, five states are voting for recreational marijuana. So first one is California. Without question, the crown jewel of the marijuana movement would be a victory in California. California has the largest economy among U.S. states by a mile, and it, if it were a standalone country, it would represent the eighth largest GDP uh, in the world. Mm. Gaining recreational marijuana approval in California would give the industry access to a huge population of potential users, as well as give Congress the, ulti the ultimate in marijuana guinea pigs to monitor. For the state itself, marijuana would create a new source of revenue generation, which would probably be a good thing for a state that always seems to be running in the red. Estimates have suggested that legalizing adult use marijuana could lead to an additional $1 billion in tax and licensing fees for the state. The prospect 
of legalization looks good in California, although nothing can be said in stone just yet. A po poll conducted in May by the Pub Public Policy Institute of California found that 60% of voters approved recreational legalization compared to just 37% who opposed the initiative. PPIC conducted a similar poll last year, even without a marijuana initiative on the, on the table, and found the issue a lot closer, with 54% in favor of recreational legalization and 44% opposed. So the thing about California that ticked me off was the last big push that they had. <clears throat> they were doing great on their numbers, and then all of a sudden they quit, and they said, we don't have enough money to continue gathering signatures. Uh, and run the campaign, so we're going to quit, you know? And I was just, you know, I thought, screw the campaign, just keep working on the signatures, the voters will take care of it, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, so I, I was mean, just so, oh. When they legalized the growing of industrial hemp in the state of Oregon, basically the legislature went forward with the state senate and then the state house, and they all voted 40-something to 20-something to, to legalize the growing, and I made a DVD back then that went to them that kind of got them on the same page, I'm told, I haven't got to talk to more than a handful of the legislators, but a few people give me some credit, and David Sieber was speaking on it, and there's a few, but basically it's a 14-minute thing that got everybody on the same page to legalize the growing of industrial hemp. It was signed by Kulingowski, but August of mm -hmm. 2009, mm -hmm. and it took forever mm -hmm. to have the first meeting on it. That's, that's how little our bureaucracies know. They yeah. don't know yeah. nothing. Yeah. Uh, the second one now is Nevada. Among the nine states set to vote on marijuana this fall, residents of Nevada were the first to know they had an initiative on the 2010 ballot. On the 2010 ballot, Nevada is already home to Sin City and a vast network of medical marijuana dispensaries, making a move to legalization to legalize recreational marijuana only natural. If question two, as the ballot measure is known, is approved, recreational can cannabis in Nevada would be subject to a 15% uh, wholesale tax. The revenue generated from this tax would predominantly be shuttled into the K-12 to education bu budget. While it would seem likely the Nevada residents would also legalize recreational marijuana, let's not forget that Oregon, a state known for its pot interest, in, infrastructure failed to pass a recreational marijuana initiative in 2012 on its first go-around. An informal poll offered by the Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas Review Journal showed 88% support for recreational marijuana legalization, but only time will tell if this strong support will hold. And by the way, I need to look into that. If I remember correctly, uh, I just read a story just a few weeks ago saying that some billionaire, I think, bought that newspaper, and now they were pr that paper was pro-legalization, but this billionaire anti-pot guy bought, to, bought it, and now the paper is against legalization. And, and it's, it's not an anti-pot guy. <laughs> the anti-pot guy is owned by the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. and a bunch of other industries because the amount of, the amount of work to come out, could, that can come out of legalizing industrial hemp is they say 50,000 products. I tell people 25,000. That's almost impossible to believe in your own that you can make 25 different thousand different things out of a plant. Come on, people, wake up. If we could make 5,000 things out of a plant or several hundred things out of a plant, let's start doing it. I went to Bymart the other day. And they had some, some, some baskets that looked like they were weaved out of uh, hemp rope. And I'm going, I'm looking to find out what was on them. They said, all it said was made in China. <laughs> I'm sure it's hemp, mm. but you know what? A bunch of elderly mm. people could get together and start making little products like this and, and make a lot of money for their oh, groups yeah. and stuff like mm. that. And, we're, and we can't even do that because we don't have a place for the stuff to go. Right, yeah, and plus it's so ex expensive to buy it because, because it's a premium for the price and it didn't need to be. Okay, and this is number three, state of Maine. Maine is among the early states to vote that residents would have the opportunity to vote on a marijuana initiative this November. The move isn't surprising given that Maine legalized medical cannabis in 1999, becoming the sixth state in the United States to legalize the substance for certain medical ailments. But will recreational marijuana pass in Maine? Signs are cautiously pointing toward yes thus far, but, but as always, anything could happen. 
A May poll from the Marijuana Policy Project showed that 55% of respondents were in favor of seeing recreational marijuana legalized as opposed to 41% who were against the idea. However, when MPP asked respondents <clears throat> if and about faiths were, po oh, let's see, oh, me, or how they felt about taxing regulating marijuana, regardless of how they felt about it, 59% favor the idea of taxing and regulating the substance. If approved, the first $30 million in tax revenue collected will go toward school construction, with the remainder heading into the state's general fund. Also, the number of marijuana stores and cultivators would be capped until 2019 and 2022, respectively, if the main marijuana legalization initiative passes. So, uh, <clears throat> the first thing I had come back with when they talk about legalizing pot, and I probably I've said it before, but as <clears throat> I used to be pro uh, pro tax, but now that uh, we have uh, you know legalization and I'm seeing how it's going, I'm thinking no. You know, we've been taxed since 1937 when they made pot illegal, and they started putting people in jail, collecting fines, collecting property. Uh, we've been taxed since 1937, and even though we, quote, have legalization, it's still continuing today. Yeah. So uh, I say it's time to stop taxing the marijuana. So forget about taxes. Forget well, here, about it. Here, here's this plant that hasn't been used for anything. No, we're not growing it. We're not making products out of it. Now they want to put a legalize it and put a tax on it to, to, to grow the stuff. All we need to do is the tax money, since it's never been used for anything else, should only go to education and health care. If we could mm -hmm. find a way, no general fund, I'm sorry, get the general fund out of this, get public safety out, except for someone broke into my backyard and stole a plant the other day. Mm -hmm. A little bit can go to public safety, but mm -hmm. education and health care is where the money needs to go to. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what? There's some people who did a study years ago that said that the health care could be paid for five times old, over. Oh, yeah. We only need it to be paid for one time. We're coming to the end of the show here, so I want to cover the other two states real quick, and we will talk about them at length in the next show. But uh, Massachusetts was number four, and number five, Arizona, uh, which is interesting. Uh, it's perhaps the longest long shot of all is Arizona, who also collected enough signatures to get a recreational cannabis ballot initiative in front of voters this fall. So. Good luck, Arizona. Uh, yep. So anyway, thank you, David. Uh, Thanks, and, uh, David Raymond, that is, for coming, and we'll see you <laughs> next time.